What's going on, YouTube.com? It's me, your host, YouTube.com. We spent some time looking at the Manosphere on this channel. Content for dudes and boys and dudes only. But what if there was a Manosphere out there that was instead of big Manosphere, it was tiny Manosphere. Little bite-sized chunks of Manosphere that you could put into a blender, blend up, and make sweet drink out of. Well, there is, and that's where YouTube Shorts comes in. And no, I'm not talking about the garments. Garments. YouTube Shorts, what's next? YouTube Pants, come on. But over the last year or so, I have seen a lot of comments talking about how swiping through YouTube Shorts will inevitably lead you to the Jordan Petersons, the Andrew Tates, and the other wild boys of internet for dudes. So today, we're gonna look at some examples and check them out. If someone breaks into my home, my job, right, I am the protector, is mm -hmm. my wife and my daughter know exactly what to do. My wife gets my daughter, she's calling 911. I'm either standing at the top of the steps or I'm going down to go to work. And I'm going to go down and go to work because that's my house and I work hard for it. Wait, is he saying he's going to go to work? Like he's going to walk downstairs, walk past the home invader, get in his car and drive to his podcast studio, which is what I assume he does for work. That would be a funny plot twist. But I think he means go to work as in violently destroy the invader. <laughs> my son's there when he's little. He would be with mom as he gets older. He's 28 years old right now. His role changes. I will have him at the top of the stairs right at that choke point with a gun holding holding that line so no one comes up if something were to happen to me as I go down and clear that house. <laughs> Calling your bedroom hallway a choke point. It is cool and normal to live your life like you're playing Call of Duty all the time. Step back, son, while I tactically insert myself into this burglar until he's gone forever. I'm gonna go down and go to work because that's my house and I work hard for it. I have nothing against like self-defense and home defense, you know, whatever you gotta do to keep your place safe. But there's absolutely this fetishized, violent right-wing fantasy of finally being able to crack your knuckles and pull out your bazooka and blast your Amazon package delivery man to smithereens because he rang your doorbell one too many times. It is very funny to me and it is very silly. As he progresses and gets older and I grow older, right? I become the old warrior, 70 or 80 years old. Then it's his job, his responsibility to step up and take my place. I'm sorry, the old, the old warrior? <laughs> Nothing quite screams watchful protector ancient warrior like a skin tight Lacoste V-neck and matching skin tight H&M stretch jeans. This literally could be like body paint. You know how people paint onto their skin to make it look like they're wearing clothes, but they're actually naked? This could be that. And this is not me checking his masculinity for wearing tight clothes, you know, not at all. I just feel like in order to be a warrior, you need blood circulation to your um, extremities. That would help. If you're a man born in a woman's body, that's biologically determined. But if you're a woman born in a woman's body, that's socially constructed. It's like, okay, good luck with that theory. Good luck with that theory. Good luck with that theory, buddy boy. Yeah. JP's got some real snark. So what's going on here is he's presenting a false dichotomy, right? Where gender being a social construct somehow contradicts the fact that gender dysphoria through the medical community has proven treatments, things that help people live fuller, healthier lives. There's really only a contradiction there if you, if you make one up and if you're not really, if you're not being honest. I don't believe you can be a man born in a woman's body or a woman born in a man's body. What I believe is that there are some people who feel alienation towards their bodies and they want to remove Well, body everybody parts. feels that. Right, but they'd feel it to such an extent that the best, clinically, the best treatment for them is to transition and live as if they were the other Yeah, sex. well, I don't think that there's any evidence that that's clinically the best treatment. We certainly don't know enough to make that presupposition, and I think we're playing with fire assuming that that's the case. The, the long-term outcome studies certainly don't demonstrate that. Yeah, so he's just lying there, uh, just straight up lying. If he's familiar with the literature, he's lying. If he's not familiar with the literature, he's just talking out of his butt cheeks. <laughs> I'll link some studies in the description about this. But what's frustrating about clips like this with this orchestral epic own situation going on is a lot of people come away with just the objectively wrong conclusion about how this treatment works and what's actually going on, which leads into that sort of bigotry that says that being trans is a mental illness, that affirming identity is somehow harmful, which is just not the case. Like comments like this. Yeah, right, the best treatment when they have the highest suicidal case after the treatment. Me, when I just lie. <laughs> and 6.4 thousand people like it. Damn, that response. One that unpacks clinically. The GOAT. <laughs> oh, 3,000 likes. Oh, oh. Smartest man of our generation. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> people just can be convinced of anything when someone is like a compelling speaker. Bruh. I'm short, ugly, bald, not very smart. Yeah, I feel freaking trapped too. So I identify as tall, good looking, smart, and rich. Somebody please explains this to the ladies because nobody respects my identity. Yeah, I mean, respecting your identity doesn't mean people have to want to 
fuck yeah for it <laughs> i fuck with a short king having confidence you know but wh what does that have to do with trans people the daily wire and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race hey what's up people it's noah from a different place here to take a quick break in the video to thank today's sponsor which is hello fresh one of my goals for this upcoming year was to eat better healthier food and pay less for it and hello fresh is a great way to do just that there are over 35 tasty recipes to choose from each week which is awesome especially with their carb smart and calorie smart options. You can even customize meals by swapping out proteins or sides, upgrading proteins, or adding protein to veggie dishes. HelloFresh sent me over a box with three pretty big meals in it, and I decided to prepare for you all and myself the squash agnolotti with bacon and scallops. It was super easy to make. The boxes come with recipe cards and all the ingredients you need to make the meals, and it turned out very tasty, and I even had uh, a lot of leftovers. I've never been a super cooking kind of guy, but I want to be, and HelloFresh made it easy to take that step. I am actually pretty happy with this experience and I'm excited to try more recipes and improve my cooking swag. Use my link in the description or go to hellofresh.com and use code pognoahjan21 for 21 free meals and free shipping. Once you click, my description will live update to count the purchases. Thanks again to HelloFresh and now let's get back to the video. This woman, she already had some kind of masculine features, like deeper voice, deeper whatever. She decided to be a man because she wanted to see how men were treated. Not sex change, an experiment. She ended up killing herself after like a year and a half of this because she said she was treated so horribly by women that she couldn't even believe that this is how men lived. Okay, so the person she's talking about is called Nora Vincent, who's an author and an LA Times columnist. It's not really clear based on her writings that the story that's being told by this podcaster is true, that the reason for her medically assisted suicide was her experience living as a man because she dealt with a lot of other mental illness stuff, it seems like. I think one of the conclusions in this article about her is, is very interesting. She was suffering, she wrote, for the same reason that many of the men she met were suffering, their assigned gender roles, she found, were suffocating them and alienating them from themselves. I did read an article one time that was really interesting that profiled a group of trans men's experiences before and after transition and how there are real social stigmas that men face that they, you know, before transitioning didn't experience. And it's really interesting, you know? And so stories like that are somewhat touched on by this YouTube short where the woman is talking about the difference in treatment, the expectation that men are supposed to be stoic and strong and not, you know, share their feelings. But then the conclusion of the video kind of like blames feminism. You want to support us, you want to be there for us, but you guys are supposed to be, you're supposed to be the strong one. Yeah. You're supposed to be these things and yet we've been fighting to be your equal, fighting to be the alpha, fighting to be, and out of kindness you guys are stepping back, but it's a losing war for both of us. She's like, oh, women are all trying to be so alpha these days and stepping up and men are just stepping back and saying oh i'm not gonna say anything oh. but that doesn't have to come with men uh sharing how they feel i think it's actually probably the opposite that the bog standard patriarchal expectation is that you're supposed to not share your feelings and moving away from that is good for everybody you know i don't know um, i'll be honest man when men and women aren't equal i'm sorry if that hurts your little stupid ears <laughs> Oh, fuck, it hurts my little, oh, I'm so triggered. Oh, ugh. come on, dude. Wow. 660,000 likes for a joke. It's been told so many times, you should be banned from comedy for life for doing it. Triggered liberals, all I'm hearing is cry, baby. We're not, we're not equal. Because equal means the word same. We're not the same. In fact, that's my favorite thing about a woman is that she's not a dude. <laughs> My favorite thing about you, girl, is that you're not a dude, because that would mean I would be gay, and I'm not gay. How flattering of a compliment to be a woman and hear that. Wow. It's every girl's dream, really. People try to make it, oh, we, 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 are, we're equal, we're the, I want it to be equalized. No, you don't. When any one of you got a babysitter tonight, how many of you picked a dude? <laughs> None of you. Not because you're sexist, but because you're not dumb. Because <laughs> the baby would fall off the f balcony and <laughs> you'd be like why was the baby on the balcony he's like i don't know i came out to smoke and you're like, <laughs> weird a uh, strange gender expectation there that that guys can't be good babysitters it's the same thing that says like guys can't be good fathers because they all oh he's too busy on the grill and watching football he's gonna fumble his baby or whatever <laughs> men are actually biologically incapable of being caring and responsible and that's a value i uphold and i think is good to impart upon 
other people. <laughs> All my boy babysitters in the comments, shout out. Uh, let me know what's good. I don't know, man. Gender humor, it's just, it's really just not my thing. It just, it just gets old so quick, you know? Especially the random dig at trans men, right? Quit pretending we're the same. I don't walk around. I could have a baby if they'd let me. I can't. <laughs> like, yes, men could get pregnant. Tra trans men are a thing. That's, it's really not that complicated. Literally zero, no, person is trying to say that a cis man can get pregnant. That's not what, nobody's saying that. When common sense is refreshing, society is failing. <laughs> I love these so much. Let that sink in, let that sink in. This is what's wrong with modern society. Oh. <laughs> Did you know that women leave men 80% of the time? And if they're college educated, it's 90. So if you get divorced, it's 80% of the time like the woman leaves. And one of the number one predictors of a divorce is actually if the woman out earns the man. Oh, I love that. I yeah. actually love that. I can't lie. I you love, love that. that? You don't I think that's that. kind of No, I'm like, girl, you you go get that. You it, go get a if, man. And like, yeah, you go get that. Like, Really? Yeah. Like, what, why is there like a lack of empathy for Ben? It's like, not a lack of empathy. It's but more there is because like they're okay. they're breaking up a family and lifelong commitment and a home and your 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 reaction is you go like go get that go get the bag, sis, or like I'm so happy for you. When that's actually a really like that's a sad situation. Like your wife is leaving you. The first issue with the framing that's being presented here is that the statistics about who initiates split ups somehow indicate who is to blame and who is making the wrong decision uh, for the relationship. It doesn't even get into any of the reasons why a woman might initiate Initiate split ups at a higher percentage than men. One of the biggest reasons is a disparity in the willingness to be a caregiver and spend time facilitating a family. And this is just very well documented throughout history. Or like cheating, because men statistically cheat more than women. What's also misconstrued here is the reasons why a woman leaving a man because she is more financially flexible can be seen as a good thing because for so long, financial dependence on a man, which is again socially constructed based on how work and gender roles play out meant that you really you really couldn't you didn't have the agency to leave if that was the right thing to do and like i don't know what the percentage of justified breakups is but i do know sometimes things just don't work out for people and holding it against every woman in the world is just probably not great i don't know seems weird Sick. Classic aesthetic method over here in the baby boy manosphere, which is presenting a warped view of society or its values based on viral clips of the most extreme representations of like anti fat phobia arguments, stripped of the context and nuance that is required in a lot of conversations about things like fat phobia, and then immediately cutting to some clips of dudes getting pumped up at the gym <laughs> and they're like this is what they want to take from you they want to get you out of the gym and all up on them damn genders but it's like what structural element of society that has any power whatsoever is is pushing any of the stuff that they play at the start right it's nico kato avocado clips there's th someone that people just will never stop talking about how what he is doing is bad like i'm all for a little gym motivation right but why does it have to be a little bit fascist you know i don't know seems not great oh here we go we may as well finish it out with a quick fnf classic we love we love we don't like it actually i see a whole bunch of empty fingers with no ring finger so what y'all need to keep a woman listen being married is not a so pro are you are in you a gonna, relationship are you gonna shut up when we finish <laughs> one thing about this show is half of it is the guys in the room telling the women to shut up and let them finish but then they just go on to say the dumbest shit imaginable let's just oh well, let's play are you gonna shut up when we finish <laughs> it is not a prize for a man to be married mm -hmm. it's like hey guys i got married right. uh, most guys are like I got married. Yeah, that's a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that's a woman. It was like, I got married. That's right. how you girls fight and claw each, claw each other's eyes out. 
to catch the bouquet at right. weddings to see who's going to get married right. next. Back. <laughs> oh, no. I, oh, God, I love that. There's actually a biological imperative to catch the bouquet because that is the number one indicator of the next person to get married. We all know that. It's proven by science. Just to be clear, this conversa conversation started off of men like us, and that's what I laughed off of. I wouldn't want none of y'all to propose to me. That's why I laughed. We don't want you either. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get men like I was time. I this wouldn't podcast, want nobody like you. And this is not to sound insulting, My, but... No no man I would want this would podcast, be on that podcast. This podcast is the only reason why you and I are in the same room. Oh, these are so these are so hard to watch, man. Oh my God, I don't know the context leading up to this, but ba I know that how this podcast goes, man. She probably made one little comment that damaged their fragile egos, and they freak the fuck out about it. Also, really no indication that this woman is a feminist. She's just usually feminist getting obliterated it means okay, there's you're talking to a woman, and as we all know, feminism is for girls. That <laughs> is actually a common misconception if you're wa if you're watching this and you like these YouTube shorts and you are wanting to sort of learn about it. Feminism. Fem Feminism's for everybody, you know? So just go Google it. The pinned comment with 26,000 likes, it says, this lady talks like she decides which man will marry her. Oh, okay, wait, so sh does she just not have a say? Or what? what is it? What are you trying to say here? Is this a pro-arranged marriage only uh, YouTube channel? <laughs> oh shit, the biggest collab since Avengers and Fortnite. We got Andrew Tate and JP on a split screen. Let's check this crap out. If we weaken men, then if they become weak enough, they'll no longer be a threat. And I argue that point, absolutely. I think the most dangerous men on earth are the weak men. And if you look at men who have no emotional control, because that's what they're trying to teach us to have. They're saying, listen, you're a man, you're allowed to just cry all the time and have no emotional control, no stoicism, just be, come, react to your emotions. You know what happens when you tell men to just react to their emotions? Anger, you have school shootings. Weak is not good. Wait, what? Wait a second, what? <laughs> Hold on. The guys who express their emotions and, and let them out and don't pen them up are the ones doing the violence? I, <laughs> what? <laughs> Another little tricky little conflation there between emotional health and emotional control. Emotional health being somehow indicative of instability with your emotions and inability to not react to them. The most dangerous man in the world is a weak man, the man who is a, not a threat. And those are actually the biggest threat because they're the ones doing a lot of violence. Very smart. School shootings. Weak is not good. The people who shoot up the high school, they're weak. You have rape, you have violence. That's what happens when you tell men to have no emotional control. And life is a very difficult process. You're not prepared for it unless you have the capacity to be dangerous. Those who have swords and know how to use them but keep them sheathed will inherit the world. You have to be powerful and formidable and then peaceful in that order. And that's not the same as being naive and weak and harmless, which is what young men are being encouraged to be. We return as we were at the start to the sort of right-wing violence fantasy. Swords and do guns and knives and being able to just sh having them sheathed but being able to chop a guy in half like an like it's anime <laughs> and i don't know man most of these guys just kind of like they're youtubers or podcasters <laughs> the most violence they'll ever experience is uh, like traffic on the way to their studio i mean andrew tate was like a kickboxer right so i guess there's more of a claim to the control over violence but young teen boys watch that and they say that's so true i'm gonna apply this to my real life as though kickboxing or if violent sports are just that they're sports they're competitions not really great to implement into your daily life but at what point does the self-defense preparation become a gleeful excitedness to finally be able to use that shit and go and go nuts go to work <laughs> i'm gonna go down and go to work because that's my house and i work hard for it i don't know man just silly uh silly fun times over here on the tube.com i'm gonna probably end it here just remember to speak softly and carry a big Bazooka, laser gun, Spartan laser. That's how to be a real man, be the watchful protector, the vengeful guardian. If I ever get home invaded, I'm gonna just be a spooky critter in the corner going, I think that's probably a better way to go because better to be spooky than to be violent or whatever. I don't know. Okay, and uh, see you guys later. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.